untapped genius. How capacity building in mathematics lays the foundation for scientific excellence in Africa. Thierry Zomahoun, African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, next Einstein Initiative, Cape Town. On November the 9th, 1989, I was on a book tour with my dad, a journalist, in Togo. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad it's a genuine honor to be here on this formidable day and the history which it marks. I want to thank Sebastian and the following world teams. I want to talk to you today about one message. But before I get there, let me remind you that 40 years ago, when Germany won its World Cup over in the Netherlands uh, in Munich, few would have believed that the, the world would have fallen. Uh, when Germany, uh, a few years ago, 40 years ago, when uh, uh, you look at China, few would have believed that China would have grown today to become one of the world's most powerful countries to be reckoned with. And few would have believed back then that South Korea would be where it is now as a technological leader uh, and leading the markets in smartphone and television. So before I get to tell you what I'm here to say today, I want to lead you through a thought experiment. It's just going to take 10 seconds. I want us all to close our eyes. Please do. Close your eyes. Think about Africa as you hear my voice. Stop on the first image that comes to your mind. Please don't zap, don't select. No one is going to judge you, no matter how bad, horrible that image is. Open your eyes. Does it seem familiar to the image you've seen in your mind? Let's be honest. Raise your hands. I've, I've worked on five continents. Each time I meet people, there are three things that come up with respect to Africa. Diseases, poverty, and corruption. And I want to say, even today, very few people uh, believe that Africa is going to be able to make it. But what I want to, I'm here to say today, my one message is that Africa is transforming. And the factors of transformation are right before our very eyes. You look at these lovely girls, which tells us that one of the factors that is leading the transformation of Africa is the economic. We've heard about it. The growth in Africa is, will be sustained over the next decades. And this growth, what is particularly important to mention here, is not just driven by resources. Look at this map. Africa is transforming because of the governance factor. This map shows you the evolution of conflicts in Africa. Back then, in the 60s, it was a safer uh, con continent. Then you move to 70s, the 70s, Africa became an unstable continent. Then you move to where we stand today, in 2007. Africa is as safe as China, Brazil, and India. Actually, there are less people affected by conflict in Africa than in India. But when you listen to people talking about Africa, when they say, is that, you know, is it safe for me to go and do business in Africa? I will tell them, yes, of course it is. Is it safe for you to go to China and do business? Yes, of course. India to do business? Yes, of course. Well, there are more people in India affected by conflict in India than in Africa. So these are the realities driving the transformation of Africa. One interesting slide I wanted to show you from Transparency International about corruption. This is something you hear. Uh, when I was flying here on the plane, I, got, I met a friend of mine who said, you know what, I'm still thinking of going to Africa and do business. But the things that worries me a lot is the magnitude of corruption in Africa. I said, well, it's a real issue. But let's look at the facts. Look at the top six countries which are less corrupt in country. Look at the gap between them and the BRIC countries. Africa, these countries are less corrupt than India, China, and Brazil. And I think my friend Maria will have some food for research here. Even Ghana is doing better than Italy. Italy is more corrupt than Ghana. These are the facts driving the, the <laughs> transformation of Africa. You look, if you're in the smartphone business in Germany, in Europe, and you want to survive over the next three, four, five decades, you better look at Africa, because this is where smartphone penetration is skyrocketing. It's going to stay, stay, stay out like this for half a century or uh, the next generations. This is the powerful use of science technology. 
You know, when you look at what science has been able to achieve in humanity, this is the result you see. The telecom industry, the smartphone industry, the electronics industry are worth $10 trillion. This is the reality. And when you look at the previous slide where smartphone penetration, telecom penetration in Africa is doing great, you can t say that this is going to be the future of our planet. Three walls that we have to bring down in Africa. One is the wall to transform in Africa into the next hub for global science. We all have seen uh, this, how tremendous development in science, in mathematical sciences, in physics, has shaped the world we live in today. And this can be traced back to the origin of math in a country in Africa, Dia Congo, where the first, uh, 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 the first counting system was discovered, then grew all into Egypt, where the, and, and then Greece, where the ancient Greece, they developed this and revolutionized the mathematical sciences. When you look at this arc, it tells you one thing that this art triggered the Industrial Revolution in Europe. And with the invention of the transistor by John Bardeen, what happened is the Digital Revolution and the, and the Silicon Valley Revolution. As the humanity braces for quantum revolution, there's something that we have to keep in mind. Africa got slipped out of the arc. We want to bring, with our partners, Africa back into the arc of innovation to make this place a better place for all of us. This is one example of how science can solve the world's problems. This is New York City. Not long ago, that's a century ago, where the, the, the most common means of transportation was city horse carriage. When you look at this, it, back then in New York, in 1880, there were 150 horses used for carriages, each of them producing 10 kilograms of manure daily. That is 1.5 million kilograms of manual. You can imagine the humongous logistic and sanitation problem that this caused. No conferences, no meetings were able to bring about solutions. What brought the solution? Is German engineering, combustion engine. I think Germans in this room must be proud of themselves. <laughs> the wall to innovation, we are bringing, breaking, that, breaking that wall down. When you look at what is happening, with investment in education in Africa, remarkable transformation is taking place. 100% enrollment at primary school level, research is making inroads in, onto the continent. And when you look at what Africa has achieved, if you take Africa as a country, uh, over the past decade, scientific publication output has tremendously improved and increased. It has increased more than Russia's. And if you take Africa as a country, in more than a decade, it has tripled. It will run 14 in the world, and fourth after India, China, and Brazil. This is something that is very encouraging. Another wall to innovation that we're trying to break down in Africa, we all know the Square Kilometer Array. This is a transformative project, the world's largest radio telescope, which in concrete terms will impact lives in Africa, but also around the globe, what this is going to do, it's going to enhance internet capabilities. It's going to give us 10 times, make internet traffic right now 10 times faster than what it is now. One of the biggest innovation and revolutionary ones that took place in Africa is the mobile banking. You know that of the 1 billion people in Africa, most of that population is unbanked people. So for you to be able to wire money transfer to rural village, you, need, you don't have access to traditional bank. This has revolutionized Africa and is still doing some great transformation on the continent. And actually, around the globe, some people are using it. You see today many technology hubs springing, across, springing up across the continent. And some of them are ranked among the world's top 50 this is also a wall that we're bringing down in Africa. The MRS, which I just slipped over, the Open Medical Research uh, System, is something that is originated from, from HIV treatment and is helping making a role uh, in, in, in transforming the continent entirely. This is 
a slide that will speak to all of us. This is where we stand now, globally. 15% of the world population is African. Now, by 2050, one, one in four people in the world will be African. But what I would like you to see is this one. By 2050, 40% of the world's young people will be African. What this tells you is three things. We have a collective future to build here. Number two, look at Europe, how Europe is shrinking. If Europe wants to survive, Europe has to look to, toward Africa. This is something that is going to be a reality. Africa is going to be the powerhouse of scientific skill, the powerhouse of talent. This is why the investment we're making now with our, our, our partners at Ames Next Einstein Initiative is extremely important to harness the power of those young people around uh, across Africa. Right now, we are in five countries in Africa building centers of excellence to train young people in using mathematical skills to solve problems in health, in epidemiology, in information technology, in banking, and you name it. We're working with the partners around the globe, like the German government, and like with the Robert Bosch Foundation. This is something that we're proud with. We receive students from 40 countries in Africa, 30% of them are women, and we're planning to expand our centers of excellence network to 15 countries. This is where our faculty comes from, from worldly, uh, top-notch universities. You see them from 30 countries from the five continents. What we are trying to develop in the next year or so with our partner, Robert Bosch Foundation, and I'm happy to acknowledge them here, we came up with a brand new initiative, which we coined as the next Einstein Forum. We want to provide young African scientists with a platform to share with the entire world their discoveries and the solution they're bringing about to solve the world's problem, not just Africa's problem. We're proud to announce that this forum is going to take place in a year or so, and we want you to join forces with us to make this happen because of the 30% by 2050 that I mentioned. So I want to leave you with these slides. What basically we are trying to achieve at the Ames Next Einstein Initiative is to bridge the gap between humanity and science. And that's something that we deeply care about. And there, there, are, better, there are no better faces than the face of Einstein and Mandela, two of the people who really shaped the 21st century, to tell us that this is still ultimately an important goal today. Second thing that I wanted to leave you with is that our global common collective future lies in investment in youth, no matter where that comes from. But if you keep in mind that by 2050, four young people will be called Africans, I think this has to change, to help change our perspective, our vision, our philosophy on how we are really promoting the world's peace and world development. And on this, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to continue the debate as we move forward. Thank you very much.